My name is Jorge Zagasti. That's my name. We are in Argentina right now, starting in Paraguay. I'm working for Open Bus. That you can see Shendo Cooper back there, I go. Uh, we are going to do some funny flats. And you know Argentina's flag, Paraguay, we are there right now. We are going to Brazil soon and Mexico in the near future. And the talk of today is how we managed to accomplish our task of handling the millions of transactions a day uh, on concurrency, performance, and volume uh, on a production site and our current full small talk. So uh, I'm going to talk about ORB or ORM, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to talk about proxies also and I'm going to talk about yeah, shit. Uh, this is These are my last words, the words standing here. I'm going back to the computer now, and it's going to be a full handsome lecture. So let's go back to business. What do I have here? Do you listen to me? I have the Mac. I have Windows installed on it. I have Bust. I have the uh, Posture SQL database. And, uh, I have Write in Q. I have uh, the virtual machine running on parallels and that's it. That's, that's all I have. Bust is running. And it's it's nice to see similar windows running on Mac anyway. On but window windows running on so, and the I have everything locally. Wi Fi is, is connected, as you can see. So everything is in this machine right now. We can ask me whatever you want. And if you want to interrupt, please do so. I don't want to, uh, I don't know how much time we're going to have for answers at the end of the talk, so uh, go ahead if you need anything. We have developed a tool, ah, I'm sorry, we do the deployment on Ubuntu. If you see, if you saw the wonderful talk made by Gabriel Rodriguez on Wednesday about how we deploy on Kubernetes. Cure the bots are running Ubuntu there, so we chose Ubuntu for it to speak, um, but we used uh, Windows on our machines. The main reason, and I said it before, but I'm going to repeat it because this is the importance of this talk. We worked really hard to accomplish uh, several things. And it's really important for us that uh, we maintain a reliable setup and everything is working right now in production. Uh, we develop a tool uh, that we call attributes. Uh, it's a kind of metadata to be able to manage the mapping in between an object model and a persistence. It's, there's, we use the, a connection we use all the best set to go to Postgres. Uh, there's some bust has its own connection interface. We are working really hard on performance, so we did our own interface. Uh, it's based on Toplink for Java, if you ever knew it. Uh, Hibernate has its an alternative, and it, we can compare with all of them, but ours is 
uh, more performance we we chose to make our own uh, there's blood for file also uh, another ORM and uh, we can have a discussion between ORM and all the data much data if it's possible what, uh, what, or be, excuse me what is an pop and a whole traditionary for a press systems okay. instead of model but it's exactly the same thing okay. and, and, and the two attributes what it does the uh, it's a kind of metadata that allows you to map our objects to the persistence and it's really the heart of our way to communicate or save the data, retrieve the data for, for any data. And right now we are using Phosphor. Uh, I'm going to discuss another technology that I have here that it's a message broker, but we are going to do it at the end. Uh, we have an attributes window on, on bus, this break here. I have it open also already, so I'm not going to use that. And what we do is to define seven an object that allow us to communicate, map the, well, you all know that small dog is of type. So the database is type. So we need to define a way to type, type that, that to type that data and allow us to save it and retrieve it for the persistence based on different different types. And we have the primary types here. I'm going to use a glass called, uh, let me not mention the IPS, I, I'll just call it application user. And uh, this application user, it's, an attribute that allows you to define how it's going to be the, the, the data converted from um, the, our model to the persistence, in this case, and uh, possibly, but we can use wherever we want. Uh, we have all the properties here. Let me choose user ID, for example. This is a new user. That's it. That's these are the, the properties of the user. Uh, if I want to modify it, let me show you how it looks like. I'm going to zoom in there so you can see better. Uh, you give them the getters, the setters, and uh, the object class that it's going to use, and uh, the persistent name, this is the table. What we need to manage here is we have primitives that are going into a table. This is the name of the table that is going to use in the database. We have uh, another, we don't normally need to store primitive variables. So uh, sometimes you need to use collections. So we have a one too many attributes and you have many to many where you have to define a table in the middle of the two different objects that are stored on the columns. So this is how we define uh, an attribute and we can use it for a many primitive type. For example, if I have a date, for example, let me find the date, password date. It's exactly the same. On the other one, it says screen. On this one, it's a date. Write it. Mm, same table, different print. And uh, let me show you on the glass browser how we do that. Let me, at least, let me show you the. Uh, uh, 
Setters and get on so you can see that there's absolutely nothing in Bayesian any other type that string. So I'm going to use APS, IPS, stuff negation user. And here you have setters and getters for user ID. Let's see if you're saying for but to here and there is nothing more. The the this class the we receive the message is at strings that's it. There's nothing that mentions any other type of variable needed. The ORIM, our framework, does everything for us. I'll show you a pen. I have a Windows here. This is great if you're using Lust. And let's go back to the attributes and let me show you some one to many, for example. It's exactly the same thing. Ha, I always do that. Uh, what the main like written in the field exactly the same thing instead of one line getter setter on the table that we're going to use that's it mm -hmm. and, uh, and it it works with a collection of the two on the other way we have many too many that we have in the mind, they do. Columns that we're going to use, the intermediate column that we're going to use, and the exactly the same thing, the two fields to, on the database that are going to be marking those values from one side to the other. The, what is fun with this is that we don't need to do anything on our source. If you use this framework, you will receive the kind of class that you are going that you need to use. Then that's it. There's nothing more than that. Let me show you how we store these things because we have an application user that has some inherited classes and we need to store them on the same table. So how do we do that? We have, for example, uh, application user administrator, which is, uh, which is a kind of application user. And it needs to be stored on the same table that application users are stored. Let me show you on the class exactly what I'm talking about. We have asset. On the instance of basic I can, but it's not going to fit. What I can do is to zoom. I am sorry that I forget, just tell me zoom, and I will zoom. Uh, I I shall forgot about it. I'm sorry about that. An application user we have a table name that is called application user. Well, we have asked. so original, and we have a application user administrator that doesn't have anything defined, so it's inherited from application user. So we are storing different kinds of data, different objects with different definitions on the same table. So how do we manage to store on that table that information? Well, we have something called class ID. Class ID, what it does is, well, we define an object ID and we put 
this at the beginning. So this is going to be unique on all our objects and different types have different class ideas. So when we create the object ID for every object on the platform, we know exactly what we are reading from the persistence. This is great news, and as you can see, if you see an application user administrator has a different class ID that, than any other object on or on any other class object on our on our on our web system database. Let me let me allow you to show you that if I just create an object, an instance, uh, let me get this worst space. This one. And I'm going to do uh, an application user. I show it to you. And it has, as you can see, a class ID based on the class. If I want to use, if I want to create an application and then it's very new search. Well, it looks, it's exactly what I mentioned in front of that. It will have a different class ID. So when it's scoring the database, we know exactly, when we read it back, we know exactly what kind of object is that. This is key for our platform and we are using it all over the place. Uh, every class has its own class ID and of course a different object ID and we're gonna read it and write it uh, from and do the buffertings, etc. And now let's try to this is all about persistence. So let me show you how we store and retrieve and update data from a database. Uh, I'm going what I'm going to do is I'm going to find something. Let me show you this is a statement and it's something that you probably know really well. You know exactly what I'm doing there. I hope so. And uh, there's nothing about persistence from there. What I'm doing is just using regular Montauk to go and get the, the sysadmin from the database. But well, I know it's a collection. I'm going to get the last and hope you understand that. So I'm getting a user administrator. On the drum stick, what we are going to see, clearly hope so, is that we wait. We went and select from application user. We are, what we are doing is just getting the user from the data map is just with a regular statement which doesn't know anything about going to the persistence. So it's it's quite easy for us to do that now. If I want to just let me finish all this um Let's do an attack because I was able to read this object from the data, but I want to change it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's use another net. Speak up or whatever I want. So this is a T that I use at true consumer in the end. Ah, you know. If I inspect that, well, I get an app it, as you don't see. What is great? It's going to Bosphore and it's writing it or updating that record on the database. Statement uh, with the common update, it just goes to the database. Uh, just 
works. Uh, it's it's quite easy for us. Let's go back and uh, uh, get it. There. With this in mind, we can do whatever we want just from regular small door uh, expressions. Uh, we wrote and we read from the database. The, do you want to see it on the database? Yes, you do. You do. Let's go to see on the database. Uh, I use a tool called Valentina. We can discuss this. We've been discussing it inside the Open Bus for years now. Uh, and I know PC admin works well. This is my database. And in just, if I just want to see how it works, let's do a select. We have a function on both uh, that allow us to convert that object ID to something in viewable on hex. And I'm going to search for that record and hopefully you will find it, it's right there. Mm. So if I update it again. The fellow at the uh, whatever it was. And let me run it again. Administrador, it's Italian now. And let's go back to the database. And if I run this, hopefully you won't find it. Okay, it won't, which is great. And uh, let me paste what I typed it there. And uh, it's, and uh, run it again. And it's right there. So with this, I think I need to prove the point that we are working with our local poster in <coughs> STL. Uh, with this, I can show you, this is the way our uh, ORB or ORM works. Uh, any questions about the ORB or ORM? Because I'm we do best. Yes. But, ah. <laughs> you don't the well, but then. Ha. Huh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and let's go to process really, really, really fast. Uh, we have a look at cases there, process, so what do you want to be here? As you can see, it's a collection proxy. Proxies are objects that have the minimal necessary data to function. Uh, as you can see, I didn't do any thing to get this object, let me open it, it's a collection, and I didn't go to the database to get it, because it's not needed, it's lazy loaded. Whatever I need, it goes there. And what it doesn't, what, what it cannot do is uh, get the size, for example. So I'm going there, if I want to do this, I'm going to do a cell size. You can make sure And right now, since it went to the proxy, it went to the uh, persistent to get that output because we we modify its collection to get that information and whatever it needs to go to the database, it goes to the database. And uh, it did something really fine uh, because what it actually is doing is that 
uh, it's it's just converted. If I open it again, this time, if I update the variables here, it was a collection proxy, as you can see, and now it's a persistent collection. And uh, what it did was really, really clear. Uh, the proxy is no there anymore. Well, uh, and it converted to a persistent collection on the whole of the whole system. Uh, and it went to the database to get it. Now, let me show you some cache. Huh. This is going to be fast. And I close fast. Then they get the drums to be here. What do we have in order to have cache? We, we have two types of cache. I'm really sorry about the time. It's really close. We have two types of cache. And uh, static, uh, they're working on the same node, on the same image. And we have an uh, incremental cache that we use with several uh, nodes running on the same Kubernetes, and uh, what we do is, I won't be able to show up to you. I'm really sorry about the time. And I mean, you can explain it one that on on the break or, or whatever. So yeah, no, 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 I know, I know, I know. We're not wondering. So I will Take you to any other room if you are interested to see it because it's it's great. What we do is we use optimistic clocking on Memcache, message broker, communicating the different nodes. And we use something called optimistic clocking. We don't lock the records. We will uh, we just check the last optimistic looking that it's on every object we need performance we have an object cache on every machine that object cache has a collection of objects that are cached and we have the last time that we use that object store in every object so we can do garbage collection later and get the we can define the policies on our garage collector to be able to delete the cache based on time or space that we use on that machine. I'm, I'm going to be outside. I have so many other things to show you. And I managed the time to a little wrong. And I had two Vast images running here to two images, and I can show you that we modify an object on one image, and using the image as broker, we are using running right now, right in queue. Uh, the other, the the same op, the I'm sorry, the same data is modified on the other machine with the same object ID that we use to map to the persistence. So. Thank you very much for your time.